All right, hello. Today we are going to start a presentation, really that's gonna be divided into three parts, may, maybe two, we may put these two together. Um, we're starting a presentation on percent composition, empirical formulas, and molecular formulas. But as you know, um, the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So today we're gonna to focus on percent composition. And composition just means making something up. All right, so here we go. I think most folks, when I really kind of intuitively understand what percent composition means because most people have seen it like a pie graph, for instance. We know that a pie graph would really represent 100%, or we would think that the pie would represent the whole. And we know that we can take different pieces of pie. This particular graph says favorite type of movie. So 25% of the people who responded said their favorite movie was an action movie. Well, I think we understand this represents you know this much of the pie so i think i think understanding sort of percentages most people kind of i think have a good handle on what we mean when we mean representing a certain part of the whole this represents this part of the whole okay okay but here it is i need for you to take something into consideration and i need for you to be able to slow down sometimes and sometimes you may have to read something more than once and you may have to listen to it more than once because, you know, sometimes you got to wrap your mind around it. So I would like for you to understand that I showed you this and we were just simply talking about percentages, but it, it, it appears to me that this number five is the number of people that probably responded to this, to this, you know, inquiry about what is your favorite movie. So don't forget that even though this piece of pie represents a percentage, it also represents a value, okay? That percentage represents a value. And that's something that we wanna keep in mind as we get into this next part and as we get into today and as we get into some problems that you're going to learn how to do, all right? We're talking percentages, but that percentage represents some value, all right? So here we go. Percent composition by definition the relative amounts of the elements in a compound, okay, are expressed as the percent composition or the percent by mass of each element in the compound. All right, now here goes. I'm gonna turn my lights on real quick because I wanna, I wanna run something past you here, okay? All right, here you go. And let's try to make this as easy as we possibly can. I have some sort of whatever here that has a mass of 100 grams. It's made up of A, B, C, and D, okay? Now, come on, let's think about this. This is this, these four items make this up and it has a mass of 100 grams. If A comes in at 10%, in other words, A represents 10% of this, then that's going to be 10 grams. That's just simple math. If B comes in at 20%, then what's it gonna represent? You're like, well, that's easy, Mr. J. It's gonna represent 20 grams. Yes. If C comes in at 30%, then what's it going to represent? Well, Mr. Day is gonna represent 30 grams. Very good. And what if D comes in at 40%, then it is going to represent 40 grams. Okay, now, if we think about this, what's 10 plus 20? That's 30. Plus another 30 is 60, plus 40 is 100. So, these percentages actually represent amounts, okay, that must total up to the original amount, all right? So, I think this is well within your capability to understand this concept, all right? So... With that being said, let's continue, all right? So what we're gonna do today is we're going to look at something called percent composition. We're going to look at compounds and we are going to determine, like for instance, we might look at a compound like this, K2CRO4, okay? I don't even, I'm not even gonna worry about its name right now. We're just, obviously we have a compound because it's made up of three different elements. Potassium represents 40.3%, chromium would come in at 26.8%, and oxygen would come in at 32.9%. Now, that is the percentage of this compound that each one of those elements represents. 
So potassium represents that much, chromium represents that much, and oxygen represents that much. Okay, but that doesn't tell me, uh, that, that's a percentage. So if I knew how much mass I had, if I knew how much mass I had here, okay, then I could figure out how much mass each one of these has simply by multiplying the percentage times the whole. So if I knew that this, once again, just using that 100, if I knew that this had a mass of 100 grams, then I would simply multiply 40.3 times 100, 26.8 times 100, and 32.9 times 100, okay? Because this percentage could ultimately represent a value, all right? So that's something you need to think about. So we're gonna talk about percent composition. We're gonna talk about mass. We're gonna talk about these relationships. All right, so let's talk about kind of one of the first types of problems that we're gonna do um, that would be based on mass data, all right? Based on mass data, okay? So in other words, what if I want to find percent composition, okay? I wanna know, if I wanna know these numbers, Okay, if I want to know what percentage does X represent or what percentage does Y represent, then could I do that? Yes, if I had mass data. Well, what do you mean? If I know the mass of the element, okay, the individual element, if I know the mass of the individual element and I know the mass of the compound, then I would simply divide the mass of the element by the mass of the compound. I would multiply by 100 and that would tell me the percentage of that element in that compound. So the mass of the element over the mass of the compound times 100. That is if I have mass data. Well, what if I don't have mass data? What if all I have is the chemical formula? Well, then you know how to calculate molar mass because you've already learned that earlier in the try. You know how to use the periodic table and you know how to calculate the molar mass of a compound and you know how to calculate the molar mass of an individual atom. So if I know the mass of the element in one mole of the compound and I know the molar mass of the compound, then all I have to do is this division, multiply by 100, and I can find my percent composition. I'm finding percent composition here. I'm finding percent composition here. So here and here, I'm gonna come up with my percent composition. All right? All right, let's continue. So let's do a problem, because I think sometimes the easiest way to jump in and to understand something is you've got to see how you're going to apply it. So here we go. We're gonna use mass data. So there's no secrets here. We're gonna begin with a problem that is going to focus on mass data. So when a 13.60 gram sample of a compound containing only magnesium and oxygen is decomposed, 5.40 grams of oxygen is obtained. What is the percent composition of this compound? So in other words, come on, what do I wanna know? You're smart kids, I wanna know the percent of magnesium and I wanna know the percent of oxygen. How do I know that? Because the problem told me so. How do I know those are the only two elements I need to find? Because that's what the problem said. It's only made up of magnesium and oxygen. So the real question is, what does the problem tell me? What is the known information in the problem? Well, what do I know? I know how much mass I have overall because I was told I have a 13.60 gram sample. I know how much oxygen I have because I was told in the problem how much oxygen I have. So I know how much I have overall and I know how much oxygen I have. I wasn't told how much magnesium I have, but if I know there's only two and I know how much I have overall and I know how much oxygen I have, then I'm just gonna do a simple subtraction. And now I also know how much magnesium I have. So honestly, what do I know? I know my mass overall. I know how much oxygen is in that mass. And I know how much magnesium is in that mass. Well, then you gotta be loving life, I would think, because that's pretty simple, right? You're thinking, isn't that what we just talked about? And the answer is yes. When we said we were gonna mess with mass data, we said if we knew the mass of the element, 
and we knew the mass of the compound, I can just do a simple division and multiply by 100, and that tells me the percentage of that element in that compound. So going back, I know overall, I know how much oxygen I have, and I know how much magnesium I have. So it's a simple math problem now. If I divide my amount of oxygen by my overall amount and multiply by 100, then I get 39.7%. Now, please remember, when you divide this by this, this number is bigger than this, so it's actually going to be point, it's going to be point 0.397, looking at your sig figs. Why are you multiplying it by 100? Because you're turning it into a percentage, so you're moving your decimal point, right? That's how you get the 39.7%. If I know how much magnesium I have, and I divide my amount of magnesium by my overall amount, and I multiply by 100, what do I get? I get my percentage of magnesium. Now you gotta use some common sense here because what should these two add up to? Well, they need to add up to 100%. Remember, that's going all the way back to that pie graph. Okay, what do I learn in this problem? Well, I learn that magnesium represents 60.3% of this compound. Oxygen represents 39.7%. What did you solve for? you solved for percent composition. And if you recall, I told you all the way back at the very beginning of this presentation that the first thing we were gonna look at uh, in this overall unit, the first thing we were gonna look at was percent composition. So we simply took the mass of the element, divided it by the mass of the compound, and multiplied it by 100. Because what were we using in this problem? We were using mass data, okay? Right, now what if we had only the chemical formula? And you know what a chemical formula is, something like H2O, all right? Here's the chemical formula. Propane, C3H8, the fuel commonly used in gas grills, is one of the compounds obtained from petroleum. Calculate the percent composition of propane. All right, so what do you know? Well, you know what you have, you have propane. You have C3H8. What else do you know? Well, I'll tell you what you know. You know all of the information that you've already learned about how to calculate molar mass and how to calculate the mass of one mole of a particular element. You've already done that. You did that when we studied about the mole. So you know everything you need to know in order to solve this problem. Because you can go to your periodic table and you know that I gave you this link so that we're all using the same table. You know how to go to the 10th place, round, knock off the AMU and add a G, okay? You know how to find the molar mass of one mole of a particular atom, or you can find the molar mass of one mole of a particular compound. You know how to do that. And then what do you do with that information? Well, you do this. You simply, Take the mass of the element, okay, one mole, right? And you divide by the molar mass of the compound and you multiply by 100 because don't lose sight of what we're trying to do here at the beginning. We're figuring out what percent, okay, what percent does that particular item make up of the whole? That's what we're doing. We're calculating percent composition, percent composition. So, let's do a problem. Back to our problem. Propane, C3H8, the fuel commonly used in gas grills, is one of the compounds obtained from petroleum. Calculate the percent composition of propane. So what are you being asked to do? Well, come on, if propane is C3H8 and you're being asked to calculate the percent composition, then we need to know how, what percentage does carbon make up of this compound and what percentage does hydrogen make up of this compound. So I hope at this point you're like, oh yeah, I remember how to find molar mass. All I gotta do is go to the periodic table, look up carbon, I know I have three of them, right? I mean, all I have to do is go to, to find hydrogen, and I know I have eight of them, and then I can add all that together, right, to get the molar mass of the compound, or I can just look at the molar mass of the individual atoms. And what am I gonna do? 
I'm gonna take the mass of the element, okay, in the mole of that, and I'm gonna divide it by the molar mass of the compound. So, so here it is, come on, let's keep this simple, short, and sweet, because you know how to do this. So you go to the periodic table and you look up carbon and you know that you have three carbons at 12.0 grams, that's 36 grams. You had eight hydrogens at one gram, so you know that that was equal to eight grams. So what happens when you add those two together? Well, you're smart and you know that that's 44.0 grams of C3H8 propane. So in one mole, one mole of this, this is your molar mass, okay? But this is how much carbon you had and this is how much hydrogen you had. Oh, you're like, oh, okay, well, I know. So now this is like my, kind of like my original problem was, right? You know how much of this you have and you know how much of the hole you have. You know how much of this you have and you know how much of the hole you have. So what do you do? You just do simple math. You do the same thing we did before. You take 36 divided by 44 times 100 and you find out that carbon is 81.8%. That's car So carbon represents the most it's percent, look at that, that percentage is greater than this one. So in this C3H8, carbon represents the most percentage of the whole. I mean, that's just exactly what you're telling me, okay? And then you have eight divided by 44 times 100, and you get 18%. Now, if you were to really look at this, you know that it has to come up to um, you know that it has to come up to 100. Well, if we really considered sig figs here, we'd make this 82, and 82 plus 18 would be 100. So 100, um, you know, percent. So, so we're good, okay? So we're good. This has to equal 100%, and it equals 100%, all right? Except what did we do? Well, this time we just used the chemical formula. So in the problem, I didn't give you, I did not give you any masses in the problem. You just calculated it, the percent composition from molar mass. But in the first problem that I gave you, okay, I actually gave you some masses. So the first problem that you learned how to do was based on mass data. The second problem that you're learning how to do is only based on the chemical formula. All right, now this is where you're gonna stop. And you're gonna take a breath. And you're gonna say, okay, maybe I need to go back and, and watch that again. Maybe I need to stop and think about that. Maybe I need to pause and look at the math work because I'm not just gonna rush through my work so I can get it done. I know that I need to understand. So I'm gonna take the time it takes to understand. Now, that's what you're doing if you're doing your job right, okay? So you've learned so far how to find percent composition if I give you mass data and you've learned how to find percent composition if all I give you is the chemical formula. Okay, now, there's only one more type of problem we're gonna learn how to do in this first section. And that is, hmm, what if I don't, or what if I just give you composition? Because up to this point, you've been figuring the percentage, but what if I give you the percentage? Well, as you know, come on, think about this, especially when we did work with the mole, this year, we have done a lot of work where we go back and forth, remember? Like moles to atoms or atoms to moles. We could do that problem either way, okay? We basically started this presentation today with mass data, right? Then, even, and basically, even with the chemical formula, we still used mass data, okay? Remember, molar mass. But what if I want to find mass? And I just give you percentages. Then you're like, hmm, I bet we can probably do that because so far this year, that's what we've been learning. We can, we can almost always go back and forth. Yes, okay, we can do that. So just think about this. If I had an object made of X and Y and it had a mass of 100 grams, so this is kind of going back to what I did on the board with you earlier. Both X and Y represent 50%. Well, you gotta be loving life right now because that is extremely easy math work. Then how much mass does each represent? So in other words, how much mass does X represent and how much mass does Y represent? Well, if they each represent 50% of 100 grams, then you know that 50% of 100 is going to be 50 grams. Okay, so what do you know? 
you know how much mass both X and Y have, but I never told you that at the beginning. I just told you the percent composition that they represented. So this is what I'm trying to get you to see right now. The first two problems, I gave you all kinds of masses. Now I'm saying, what if I wanted to know mass, but I only knew percent composition? Could I do that? And the answer is yes, I can do that. Sure I can, sure we can, okay? All right, so let's find mass if I only give you percent composition. And by the way, we're almost finished. So here we go. So let's go back to propane. C3H8 is propane. I have 82 grams of propane. Now you're like, well, I thought you weren't gonna give me any mass data. Well, I'm not giving you any mass data for like this specifically. I'm telling you how much propane I have, okay? All right, so what if I wanna know out of this much propane, I wanna know how much mass of carbon I have and I wanna know how much mass of hydrogen I have. Well, I hope that you're sitting there and you're thinking, and I hope that you're trying to think ahead, and I hope that you're trying to use a little common sense, because here's what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, well, then I need to know my percent composition of carbon, and I need to know my percent composition of hydrogen, and then I can just take those percentages, multiply it times the total, and that will give me how much of each that I have, okay? That's what we do with percent composition data. That percentage tells us how much of the whole something represents, okay? So what, how could I do this problem? Well, it'd be a two-step problem. I would have to calculate the percent composition. I would have to know what percentage carbon makes up of this compound and what percentage hydrogen makes up. Now, once I know that, then I would simply multiply percent composition times the total. And then that would tell me how much C I have, and it would tell me how much H I have. Okay, now, if this was the only problem that I had given you, and this is the first time you'd ever seen this problem, what would you do? Well, you're like, well, okay, you gave me the chemical formula, so I can calculate percent composition strictly from the chemical formula, just using molar mass. Yep, that's what we did a while ago. And then you would be like, and then once I know the percent composition, Mr. Day, I know how much each part of, makes up of the whole, yeah? Then I would just multiply that percent composition times this, and that would tell me how much each represents. That's exactly right. You've already done part of that. You already figured out in a previous problem, and I kind of did this on purpose, okay? We already figured from the chemical formula how much percentage carbon represents, and we already calculated from the chemical formula what percentage hydrogen represents. So now that you know this, then you're almost done. You're almost home free, right? Because once you know percent composition, all you have to do is multiply that times your overall total. So when you do that, you find out how many grams each one of these represents. So if you know how much carbon you have, the percent composition, and you multiply that times the overall amount, then you know how much carbon you have. So in other words, come on, think about this. 67.1 grams of carbon is what? Is 82% of 82. What's 15 grams of hydrogen? Well, it's 18% of 82. And what does 67.1 and 15 added together, what does that equal? Well, it equals 82. Well, why does it need to equal 82? Because that's how much mass we had. So, how much mass do we have of carbon? We have 67.1 grams. How much mass of hydrogen do we have? We have 15 grams of hydrogen. All right? So what did you do in this presentation. Come on. You recognize what percent composition means. It means a certain percentage of a whole. What else did you do? You calculated percent composition from only mass data. Then what did you do? You calculated percent composition only knowing the chemical formula because you know how to do molar mass. 
And then what did you do in the third problem? Well, instead of me giving you the individual masses, you found them based on percent composition. Now, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna watch this. You're gonna go through it. You're gonna fill out the assessment. You're gonna answer several questions. I'm gonna to try to point you in the right direction. And then I'm going to give you practice problems that are gonna follow the exact same format as these problems. Why? Because practice makes perfect. Except really, it's perfect practice that makes perfect. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the time that you need and you're gonna watch as many times as you need to watch and you're gonna look as many times as you need to look to wrap your mind around the problems and you're gonna jot down the questions that you have so that you can ask me in class.